another wow as uh, group B ends like everyone expected but boy this was not a straightforward road for either Spain or Portugal um, at one point both were just a goal away of being eliminated um, high drama and I guess this is the group stage the final day of the group stage at its best when you have two parallel games and things are changing especially in the last minutes uh, by the second uh, it seemed also clear at the beginning I mean Morocco got the early goal so it was uh, Iran 4 Portugal 4 well, Portugal 5 and Spain 4 at that point still Spain would have the advantage thanks to goal differential uh, Spain equalized and I have to say that the uh, Morocco goal was one of those weird errors where Iniesta and Ramos both rely on each other and then the Morocco player runs straight on goal. It uh, was really, really weird uh, to see that. But then Iniesta made good on that uh, for Pa and in a wonderful, typically Spanish move, Isco scores an equalizer uh, by an assist of Iniesta. It was more or less all Iniesta's goal thanks to that assist. Uh, Isco did a well, good and controlling, he could have passed it to Silva to his right but decided to hit it high in the net and yeah uh, Morocco seemed to have quite some chances in the first half uh, as well and it was kind of a rough game there uh, and it was also an up and down game in Saransk between um, Portugal and Iran with uh, maybe Portugal having a slight edge but Ronaldo for the first time really not asserting himself onto the game as you might expect. Karajma then scores a wonderful goal with the outside of his right foot uh, right in the corner. Uh, the ball sails, absolute beauty. Um, definitely one of the better goals of the tournament. I don't want to say it's the best goal because we have seen many great goals and I don't think it's quite up, 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 up there. But top of the second tier, I would put that one. A uh, really great piece of skill from a player that is super skillful, but also, as we saw then later, gets emo emotions get the better of him. And I think this is one thing that always prevented him from being probably an absolute world-class player. And then, uh, I mean, I saw most of Portugal-Iran. Portugal looked kind of in control, and then Ronaldo got a VAR decision. Uh, penalty. I still think it was a penalty, um, but this was the point where the game got ugly uh, with Iran being kind of desperate, making fouls, lots of protesting, um, and Portugal not exactly doing anything to calm things down either. So they get the penalty, and everyone thinks, okay, this is Ronaldo's chance now, he makes it to nothing, done and dusted. Nope, goalkeeper saves it and uh, also led to the favorite part of this game. Carlos Queiroz, the Portuguese trainer of Iran, is throwing away his jacket and leaving straight for the locker room. Goalkeeper saves it, they tell him, come back, come back, come back. Uh, it's not all against us. Um, and so they're back in the game. Then, but at this point, uh, Portugal won nothing up. Spain 1-1. One, one. So we have Portugal in first place, Spain with five points in second, Iran three points, Morocco sitting at one point. Then things, when everything seemed like it, this is gonna be it, uh, you knew that a goal by Spain uh, that would pull them even with Portugal would give Spain the first place, so it was a one goal lead for Portugal. And also if Portugal got the equalizer it would still be um, Spain, I think it will still be Spain ahead of Portugal and then Iran because uh, Spain and Portugal had the advantage of playing the 3 3. So even if it um, would be like that, and also, I mean, of course, it would be 5 5 4 1. Stupid me. Morocco scores the go ahead goal. Uh, a little bit at that point against the rough play, although Morocco had many chances, uh, even hitting the uh, crossbar. So I think Spain was lucky, but also Spain uh, at that point, from what I get, I didn't see that game, but from, uh, from what I get at that point, Spain uh, actively, actively collected themselves again and uh, put some pressure forward. But nope, uh, Morocco 
made an appeal for a penalty, which definitely was not the hand was right at the uh, uh, hip, and the ball hit there. So no, there no, as no, it is a penalty. But from that corner, <laughs> Morocco scores the two one. At that point, um, Spain was still safe, and Morocco was ahead of Iran. So Iran went from to fourth place at that point, and then penalty appeal. There was in the meantime, before that, was also a red card situation for Ronaldo, which at first looked like, yeah, this could be a red, it turned out to be a yellow, and it was a lot of fuss f uh, for nothing in, in, in the end. Yes, you could clearly see he wanted to get off the Iranian player. If yeah, this was one of those instances where probably they should have said, uh, they should have let, 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 let it go. If they review that one and don't review the Serbia penalty. It gets a little bit frustrating. I think they started out well with VAR, but I think especially this game now got really frustrating for me. Um, I don't sometimes get why they are reviewing scenes and why they didn't. Um, I think on the weekend that I didn't talk too much about it because in the end the games ended uh, with a deserved winner, although the team that lost would have had good appeals for a penalty. Um, both Serbia and Sweden should have gotten clear penalties over the, uh, over the weekend. The one for Serbia still puzzles me because this guy is wrestled down by two guys. And there is no, absolutely no grey area anymore. Uh, so that one I did not get. I mean, they review some handballs and I'm sorry, um, some of those handball decisions, yes, it's okay by the rules if you put your hand out. And the ball goes on your hand, even if it's not a, if in, even it's involuntarily, it is a penalty. I get the rule, but I find this uh, rather dissatisfying, especially when you see all the wrestling going on. I mean, we had Harry Kane being wrestled down against Tunisia. And now we had Mitrovic. This was just uh, so blatant, and then also the foul on Boateng on Burke. <sighs> Could have gotten an early penalty for Sweden. So you know, this is. Um, I think overall I really like how they uh, do VAR, that they don't assert themselves too much onto the game, but I th it's not a clear line. I don't like the penalty, no penalty. But back to the game. So we get a handball penalty in the 90th minute for Iran. To me, I understand the rules. I would not have given that panel penalty because it falls right around. I mean, it's, if, you, if you jump up, you put your hands. So from that point of view, I'm not sure if it, I, I would have given the penalty, but I understand the ruling, so it's okay, it's a penalty. Iran, with a wonderful penalty, makes it 1-1. And then Spain makes it 2-2. Unbelievable sequence of events. I think Spain made it 2-2 two, two just before the 1-1. One, one. And at that point, when Spain made it 2-2, two, two, we still had that Portugal was uh, in first place, but now with the 1-1, one, one, Portugal was on the edge. And it meant that if there's another goal by Iran, Portugal's out. To add to it, um, the Spain goal was reviewed, so if it, you didn't quite know. So this was all happening roughly at the same time. If Spain would this goal would have taken off, Spain would have been out and Iran would have been in. Now, if Iran scores another goal, Portugal would be out. So there are so many permutations going there. And Iran got the chance. It made the really I don't know if he made a mess out of it. Um, I think he did the right thing. He shot and he missed. But it was so close. I mean it was a near open goal. And so yeah. Iran is becoming this team for me that they are putting a lot of effort in and they were really so close. And I'm not sure if Portugal wouldn't have deserved going out. Uh, they looked okay for most of the time, but in the end they really botched it uh, with all their expertise. And yeah, Spain similarly, they're falling in my ranking. And now I really thought that Portugal just before uh, before this craziness with the two, with the two goals in Spain, Morocco, and the uh, equalizer for Iran happened, I thought, wow, Portugal is going to win that group. They're going to go far. And now Portugal has to play Uruguay. Yeah, the program 0-0, in a way. 
And Spain is playing Russia. Spain looks, surely looks very happy at this one. Um, but both teams didn't look like more than quarterfinal teams to me. They didn't look like semifinal teams. And we have to see how Croatia will do tomorrow. I think Croatia should do everything to secure first spot because then they will play Spain and it looks like they could beat Spain. So I could well see Croatia going to semifinals. And at this very moment, although Spain again showed fluid, wonderful forward moves, just in defense they're not good enough. Uh, I think the Gea made his first save of the tournament today. It's crazy. Um, yeah, Spain is falling in my view. Uh, a few days ago I thought they are the one with the best idea and the probably they still are, but defensively they're horrible. And for that reason I think Spain will fall and it might as well that Spain makes it to the quarterfinal and maybe even Russia is happy to see Spain because they are more vulnerable. Uruguay is not vulnerable. Um, as vulnerable and Portugal will know also also know what they've been so yeah great game at Luzhniki I would say I would still favor Spain there but if Croatia makes it against Spain I think uh, I would at the moment favor Croatia but that's what the games that we played for well Jersey matchups the last thing uh, Iran Portugal was exactly as expected and we st I still don't know why Spain couldn't do that and I liked Spain's Kit combo, uh, the classic blue pants, black socks. It looks weird at first, but this is the classic Spain combo. So I like that one, and it didn't clash with Morocco whatsoever. So whatever happened on the second day of Group B, I don't understand. I think both were okay clashes. I wish that the Morocco kit, the red yolk here is okay. Keep it white, make it green here. Then you have yet then you're onto something. Or make it green here. Nah, make it exactly as I said. Then you're onto something it would look really sharp this way and give it a special extra. This way it looked a little bit bland. Put some green in there in that kit and it looks cool. Well, let me know what you thought. Uh, for us it was also high drama here because our little daughter refused to go asleep and made our life hell here. So right as the drama was going on, we had some other drama going on. But yeah, time to go to bed and I will talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.